Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic Guy, remember? Christmas! Christmas, 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 Christmas! Hey, have I mentioned yet that I love Christmas? I do! I love Christmas! The absolute best time of the year! Even this job that forces me to watch the worst of Christmas can't possibly make me hate this wonderful holiday. Even when I see things like... I'm the ghost of Christmas future. The ghost of Christmas future? Yes, the ghost of Christmas future. I'm here to show you what happens if you don't start enjoying Christmas. But I do enjoy Christmas. What? Yeah, I love it. I'm all over it. You have absolutely no hatred for Christmas. No, it's my favorite time of the year. All right, all right, guy. I don't think you understand quite how this works. Every comedy show does a Christmas Carol parody, usually around Christmas. Well, not me, I don't want it. I've got these three other ghosts waiting. They're on retainer, it's just too much. I don't care. Uh, think of the possibilities, the sight gags, the puns. Think of the cameos! Look, I'm not doing anything Christmas Carol related anyway. I'm doing babes in toilets. Babes in Toyland? The Disney flick? No, no, no. This one was made in the 80s. 1986 to be exact. It has half the talent, half the creativity, and definitely half the effort. It's about as cheap as a musical knockoff can get. And just to make things even better, it stars a young Drew Barrymore and a young Keanu Reeves. Oh, you say you love Christmas now, Critic, but wait until you see this candy-coated abomination. Don't worry, Critic. I'll be back! Well, let's get started. We start off with some Van Gogh snow and observe some of the slowest moving shoppers in mall history as we see our hero named Lisa, played by Drew Barrymore. Uh, post-crack, I think. Why else would she choose this role? She's excited because as her sister's getting ready to go to work, she starts building up what she got her for Christmas. I got you a great present. Don't ask what it is. It's a surprise. I bet it's a new blender. Well, then what is it? Wait, blender was a real guess? Good God, this must be the most boring family to have Christmas with. Oh boy, I can't wait to see what it is. Wow! It's a box! So she puts on her raincoat for the snow. Lisa gets concerned because of the weather report. And here's Gail with an update. As of 10 p.m., the giant Canadian storm continues to surge its way south. They're calling it Hurricane Canuck. So Lisa decides it's too dangerous for her sister to work tonight and tries to go get her. There's Bill and Ted's excellent Kwanzaa. How about a quick Christmas pizza at Capone's before I drop you home? Jack, I don't think I could eat three pizzas. Oh, here we go again. The Delilah of the Five and Dime. Oh, we, we thank you for this bountiful performance we're about to receive. Mary! Mary! Lisa, what are you doing here? Sorry, I tried to call, but the phones are down. Mary, you've got to come home right away. Someone should tell Barney to close the store. Here comes your big chance. Uh-uh. Ah, uh, now that's a Keanu moment. Uh-uh. I'm sure in the script it was written, I do not wish to partake in conversations with that man. To which Keanu translated it as... Uh-uh. As opposed to his... cha uh -huh. Doing your job is pleasing me. Which, in your case, would not be difficult, you know what I mean? No, I don't. You know, for a smart-looking girl, you're really pretty dumb. Don't you know it's better business to be nice to the boss? Don't you talk to Mary like that! What the heck is that? <laughs> Another great delivery to go in the acting books. What the heck is that? Though, to be fair, I think we'll all be saying that line a lot throughout this movie. Oh, yeah, well, with your attitude, you could be out of here real quick, you know that? With your attitude, I could be out of here right now! There's a blizzard out there, but I'm going to take my baby sister home. Mary, I know, I know, you're not a baby. You're 11 years old. Thanks for that. Come on, Lisa. Let's Look. go find Jack. Oh, I feel like that and ruin my biggest one-day ticket. What are you, crazy? Oh, I can't stop doing my Rodney Dangerfield impression. No respect, no respect at all. Uh, excuse me, everybody. I just heard on TV there's going to be a major snowstorm hitting Cincinnati. Surely the 11-year-old girl who I've never met before knows exactly what 
what she's talking about. Flee, everybody! Flee! Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Hey, that'd be funny if one of those balls actually hit him. Why? We at last. So Reeve starts driving everybody home, which is weird seeing how they clearly walked to work and they said on and on the roads were dangerous. And they can't help but sing a song about their charming little city. I come from C I N C I N N A T I Cincinnati, the best town in O E I Ohio, that's A. At first they called it Cincy, but since Cincy is so natty. What the heck is that? So natty, so natty. Hey, the girls are pretty, pretty in this pretty little city. The fellas, the Von Trapp family, they ain't. But even God has had it with their singing and tries to smoke them by tree. So in the weirdest transition to a magical land, Lisa falls out of the car, slides down a hill on her sled, and bumps into a tree. I'm sure C.S. Lewis was watching this shouting, Gah, I knew I could have made that weirder. So, as you probably picked up, Toyland looks less like an enchanted kingdom and more like one of those bad Bible-themed amusement parks. Like Christian Corners or Jehovah's Wonderland. Yeah, it's a world so enchanted that animals don't even need to blink or move their mouths when they talk. It may look like heinous budget cuts, but it's all part of the magical experience. What the heck is that? I'm Georgie Porgy, a chief taster at the Toyland Cookie Factory. Hey, here, have a... a raspberry ripple. Wow, look at all the powdered sugar! That's not powdered sugar. I'm going to a wedding. What's so terrible about going to a wedding? Excuse me, I thought they were supposed to be fun. Not this one. My best friend Jack's sweetheart Mary is about to marry that terrible mean old yip old Barnaby. But she really loves Jack. What the hell? See the house on the hill? The bowling ball? No, where? That's Barnaby's house. Sometimes when he gets really angry, he rolls his house right down the street and knocks people over like they were nine pits. God, that sounds really weird. No, your remote control disappearing on you is weird. Living in a bowling ball is fucking insane. Why is Mary marrying this terrible old Barnaby instead of his friend? Because Barnaby bought the mortgage on her mother's house and said he'd throw them all out in the street if she didn't. Well, Mary's too loyal a daughter to let that happen. And what's even worse, Barnaby is Jack's uncle. Wait, does this guy do anything outside of just shouting exposition? Now, before we begin watching The Fellowship of the Ring, I think it's only fair to go through the entire appendix of the Lord of the Ring trilogy. Oh. Aragorn and Arwen's history is a long and complicated one. <laughs> so as they roam through the land of furries, they finally come across Jack, who is not happy that Mary is marrying Barnaby. Oh, the whoa. That's Barnaby, with his two goons, Zack and Mac. But Mary's so young and pretty. She can't possibly marry a hideous creature like that. Yes, for as we all know, all pretty young people are good and should only marry other pretty young people. And all ugly people deserve to be shunned and only marry the leftover feces found in Roadkill. Fuck with us, we've been to mime school. I'm trapped in a box, I'm trapped in a box. I now pronounce you. But she doesn't love him! She loves Jack! And she really shouldn't be marrying you! So, even though she knows absolutely nothing about this person, Lisa tells Mary not to. marry. And Barnaby now, for whatever reason, is totally helpless to stop her. All he can do is threaten her with his Clinton thumb. <sighs> Let's hear it for Lisa! Yay! She pointed out the painfully obvious and it worked for no reason! Let's cheer until the rafters echo And after the echo has died away Sorry! The other half of us would be singing if we had the ability to move our lips! Ooh, does this movie make you hate Christmas yet? No. I mean, it's not good, but it doesn't make me hate Christmas. Uh, look, I don't think you're taking full advantage of this opportunity. The jokes, they just write themselves. Look! Ooh, it's the ghost of Christmas Phalus. Get out of here! Go, oh, come on, this took me like four hours in Photoshop. Go!
So we cut to, you know, just putting the name of a magical place on the side of a barn doesn't make it a magical place. No, seriously, honey, we're in France. Ow! Cookie break! So Barnaby and the Nosferatu brothers have an evil scheme. They're going to dump all the cookies down a trap door that I'm shocked nobody in the factory ever noticed before and try to blame Jack for it. While that's going on, Lisa is introduced to many of the residents in Toyland. How dare you not marry that nice, rich Mr. Barnaby? Because I don't love him. And you know perfectly well why not, Mother. I'm sorry, Mrs. Hubbard, but my uh, mother always... Did Humpty right Dumpty thing. just die on that wall? I don't think he's breathing. Oh, I had an idea about that today, too. He's here through this whole scene, and I swear to God, he never moves a muscle. Just look at his dead eyes! You can totally tell they're not alive! In fact, I think you can actually spot the moment when he leaves our world forever. And... There he went. I hope he's handled with care. He can't be easy to bury. Oh wow, what nifty little cars! <laughs> when in Disneyland, ride the Laymobile. For those of you who think the Dumbo ride is too exciting. Arrest that man. Six months inventory is missing involving millions, many millions of cookies. Thousands of boxes of cookies. God! You know, it doesn't seem very wise to have an entire cookie-based economy. Is Chips Ahoy like the Wall Street of this world? Was there an Occupy Oreo protest going on? You can't buy the necessities of life with cookies. You can't buy a car with cookies, am I right, Jim? Oh, that's true, sir, you can't. So Jack gets arrested, but his friends manage to break him out disgustingly easy. I wouldn't be surprised if the bars were made of licorice, he could have just chewed his way out. Thus, they decide to go to the Toy Master, the ruler of Toyland, to fix everything. The Toy Master would never let that happen. He let Barnaby put Jack in jail. Yeah, but the Toy Master doesn't know about that. Well, don't you think it's time he did? Wow, that's the manliest image I've ever seen since He-Man stepped foot into his pink Cadillac. I'm off to find my dignity! So they go to the Toy Master, played by Mr. Miyagi himself, Pat Marina. Because clearly, this casting couldn't get any more surreal. Wow, he must be a pretty important person, the Toy Master. Well, let's put it this way. I don't think Santa Claus would let just anybody make all the toys for all the children in the world, do you? No. Just like corporate America, when Santa's too lazy to make things himself, he hands it over to the Asians. That's productivity at its best. I'm going to let you in on a little secret, children. Actually, a very big secret. A secret I've never shared with anyone before. Secret. Oh my god, no! Oh. I've been collecting the evil of the world. You have? Yes. I seek it out and I isolate it. I extract it and then I distill its essence and I seal it in here. 